Hi everyone, my name is Suram and I welcome you all to this my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the exercises of standard 7th. And these are the short answers and the long answers, objective type questions, fill ups, etc. We are going to discuss in today's video. So exercises, very first short answers questions. So first question is, what are the vibrations? How they are related to the sound? So vibrations are the rapid back and forth movements about a fixed point. Sound is produced due to the vibration. That is the relation. How the sound is related to the vibration? So sound is always produced due to vibration. So which organ in our body help us to produce the sounds? Which organ is there in our body? That is the larynx or the voice box. What is frequency of a sound? How? What is the unit of frequency? So frequency, it is the number of vibration which a source makes in one second. The number of vibration made by the source in one second is called the frequency. And the unit of frequency is the hertz or the second inverse. What are the reverberations? Reverberations are the repeated reflection of sound. And mention one way in which we put the echoes in use. Echoes are used in ultrasonography. That is to take the internal pictures of the different organs. And what is a wave? It is a disturbance that travels through a medium or space. The particles of the medium do not travel. Mention one, with one factor on which the speed of sound and a medium depends. The speed of sound and a medium depends on, your, on the density of the medium. So these are the short answers of this chapter. Chapter number 7. Sorry, chapter number 6. Sound. So next we go for the short long answers long answer questions so very first question is explain the term intensity of sound give examples of high and low intensity what does intensity of sound depend on so first of all first of the thing they have asked what is the intensity of sound so loudness of sound is also called as intensity and give examples of high and low intensity sounds examples we'll discuss later how it depends on the sound it depends on power of the source means what does intensity of the sound depend on what are the factors on which it depend so intensity of sound depends on the power of the source second it depends on the distance of the listener from the source these are the two factors loudness of sound decreases or intensity of the sound decreases as we go away from the speaker and as we go away from the source of sound so examples of high intensity or low intensity sound are High intensity sound of a large drum and the sound of a sigh. These are the high intensity sound and the low intensity sound is sound of a mosquito and the sound of refrigerator. Second, we have what is meant by the pitch of sound. Give a few examples of sound of high and low pitch. Explain with examples how pitch is different from intensity. So very first is sharp sharpness or dullness of sound is called as pitch. Sharp and still sound have the high pitch. And low pitch sounds are dull and heavy sounds. Examples we are going to discuss later. Pitch is different from intensity as sound of a mosquito has a low pitch. Sorry, mosquito has a low intensity but its pitch is higher. Is it? Its intensity is low but its pitch is higher. In the same way, sound of the large drum has a high intensity but its pitch is low. So this is how the pitch and intensity is related. Pitch is totally different from intensity. High pitch sound and the low pitch sound. High pitch sound is sound of a siren and sound of mosquito. And the low pitch sound is sound of the large drum and the sound of refrigerator. These are the high and low intensity sounds. Then third we have what are the overtones, how they are related to the quality of sound. The frequency which are present with the fundamental frequencies are called the overtones. So every source which made sounds with the, its own fixed pattern of overtones this help us to recognize the sound of the different sources so in general richer or flat or richer or more plain sounds have a greater number of overtones mixed in higher proportion so this is how the overtones are related to the quality of sound means more number of overtones are present it means the more plain is the sound then next we have describe an experiment to show that the sound doesn't travel in through a vacuum so that we have discussed in the chapter also 
sound re always required a medium to travel so we have discussed the bell jar experiment in that case also so it is bell jar experiment in the bell jar experiment what is there an electric bell is suspended inside the large glass jar and the rubber stopper is closes the mouth of the jar and the two wires are coming out from the this stopper and initially the jar is filled with air and the bell is set ringing and the sounds can be heard clearly up from outside the air is then gradually sucked out by the pump and the sound will become fainter and finally it cannot be heard at all although the bell can be seen to be working and if the air is then allowed to jump into the jar then the sound of the bell can be heard again so this is the experiment setup for the bell jar experiment and then next we have why explain why and when we hear the echoes describe how the sonar is used so echoes are the reflected sound that we have discussed already so we can hear the echo if the yeah, echo reaches us about 1 over 15th of a second after we hear the sound so this is the very first condition that it should come back within the 1 over 15th of a second and the second we are not able to hear the echo if it is coming earlier is it secondly the distance between the reflecting body and the listener should be 17 meter to hear the clear echo so to hear the echo the distance should be 17 meter between the source of sound and the reflector so intensity of sound should be enough to hear to heard the to be heard at back the intensity of sound should be enough so these are some conditions required for hearing the echoes then how the disc sonar is used sonar is one of the instruments which is used in the ship so the ultrasonic vibrations are sent to the water and the time taken by the vibrations is done is then used to calculate the distance of the reflecting surface means it is used to find out the depth of the sea and to check that whether there is any obstruction is there in the path then next we have <clears throat> how do you show the sound propagates through liquids so to this we are having an experiment fill a mug with the water shake a small uh, bell inside the water then making sure that the bell does not touch with the mug so you have to take a bell and shake it in, inside the water take in the mug as this and make sure that the bell should not touch with the wall of the mug so as this will reduce the vibration of the bell place your ear close to the mug make sure that the ear should not be touching with the water because it, air, water can go inside your ear also so you will be able to hear the sound of the bell which shows that the sound can propagate through the liquid so this is one of the simple experiment describe an activity to show that the sound propagates better through the solids than through the air so take a meter scale or a long metal rod we have to take one meter scale or a long metal rod and hold one end of the ear of one end of it of to your ear and ask one of your friend to tap gently on the other end means one end you will hear and you will hold nearby your ear and other end one other person mean your other friend will tap on the other end as ask the other friend whether she or he can hear the sound I repeat the experiment by making the sound more louder you will be notice that you will notice that sound in metal rod will be heard much earlier than air which shows that sound travel faster in solids then we have distinguish between longitudinal and transverse wave use examples to explain so here we have longitudinal wave and the transverse waves so longitudinal waves as we have discussed in the chapter also these are the waves in which the particles of the medium vibrates in the direction of propagation of the wave and transverse waves are those waves in which the vibrations are perpendicular to the direction of the wave so I will, example for the longitudinal wave is the wave produced in the air by a drummer or the longitudinal wave and has traveled due to the compression or rarefaction of the air molecules and transverse waves the ripple spread of the surface of water in a pool when something is thrown in the pool water molecules due to water molecules travels due to the formation of trough and crust up and down so these are perpendicular so these are some examples 
of longitudinal and transverse waves. Then we have what is the sound insulation or soundproofing? How is a room soundproofed? So the cutting out of the unwanted sound is called the sound insulation or the soundproofing. Cutting out of the, of the unwanted sound. Soundproofing is done either to eliminate the reflection of sound uh, or to prevent the leakage of sound to and from the room or both. To soundproof a room, how the sound room is soundproof? The, to soundproof the room, walls and ceiling are usually double layered and covered with the material such that the absorb sound and floor is carpeted. So this is how the sound uh, is uh, sorry room is sound proofed. You might have seen on the in the auditoriums and in the uh, cinema theaters there is on the uh, walls of these rooms there are some special materials is always placed that is to avoid the reflection of sound <coughs> to make it soundproofed. Then we have the objective type questions. Choose the correct option. <coughs> First question is the intensity of the sound at a point does not depend on. So it does not depend on the tone of the sound. That is the answer. Second, we have the pitch of the sound at a point depends on. It depends on the frequency of the sound. Then third, we have the tone of sound depends on the harmonic present. And fourth, we have an echo will be heard clearly if the distance of the observer from the reflecting wall is it's 15 meter the weight comes to be 17 meter so it is given the option 5 10 15 and 7 are the options given so you have 15 can be the correct answer then we have material that absorbs sound are used in recording studios so these are the objective type questions <coughs> then we have the fill in the blanks so first fill up is Sound is produced in the linux by the vibration of that is the vocal cords. The dash of the sound depends on its amplitude that is intensity or the loudness. Third we have <coughs> an echo is produced by dash of the sound it is the reflection of sound. The pitch of sound depends on its that is frequency. Fifth the speed of sound in air is up there is around 340 meter per second then sixth we have the speed of sound is more in solids than in air so these are the fillups then next we have the right true or false so given the correction also so very first is the intensity of sound it depends only on its source so intense it is false so intensity of sound depends on its source also as well as the distance also that we have seen Second true and false is the pitch of the sound depends only on its source. So this is again false. Pitch of the sound depends on its frequency. Third we have a loud sound must have a high pitch. It's again false. A loud sound may not have the high pitch. Fourth vats use the reflection of vibration to locate the prey. This is true. And fifth the sound waves are longitudinal waves. Again it is true. The speed of sound in a medium depends partly on density of the medium. It is again false. It depends completely on the density of the medium. So these are all about the exercises. So in the next video we will be discussing about the numericals part. Five numericals are left. And we will be discussing about these numericals in the next video. Thank you.